Hey guys, welcome to JPT. I'm Carson G, and this is Just Plain Tech. In today's video, I'm getting out the old Acer Aspire 1 ZG5 AOA150 laptop. Some of you that have been watching my channel for a while probably remember this thing. I haven't done anything with it in a while, but today I am going to put a quad boot of Debian, Lubuntu, Slackware, and Puppy Linux on this little old netbook with um, an Intel Atom processor and only one gigabyte of RAM. And all of these operating systems are 32-bit, so unfortunately no 64-bit operating systems, but even if it had a 64-bit processor, that's not going to work with only one gigabyte of RAM, so it has to be 32-bit. And these are all Linux distributions that work very well with old computers. Alright, so here we are on the Lubuntu site. We're going to go to download. All right, so um, of course Ubuntu, I'm at Lubuntu 20.04 and 20.10 are only 64-bit, and our little Acer Aspire one is definitely 32-bit. And down here, you see we have 32-bit, and then we have alternate 32-bit. Now, alter alternate 32-bit is for low RAM computers, and Lubuntu considers. 700 megabytes or less a low RAM computer. Now technically our computer has w one gigabyte of RAM so Lubuntu wouldn't consider it a low RAM computer but it, nonetheless it still has pretty low RAM so I'm just gonna download the alternate version anyway just to get smoother performance out of it. Okay there we go. Come up here. All right, and we'll let that download. Okay, so now this is at, of course, the Debian website. We are going to do try Debian live before installing. All right, so as you can see here, we have flavors. GNOME, KDE, LXDE, XFCE, Cinnamon, and Mate, but it also has LXQT. I just don't know why they don't have it listed on here. So, of course, we have it for 32-bit i386 PC. So, we're going to go DVD, USB. Alright, so we're going to do i386. And it should take us here and if we scroll down here we have those ISOs and like I said they have LXQT which is the desktop environment I would prefer because it's very lightweight and fast but it's also like it, it's a little bit minimalistic but uh, then again it also doesn't look like scrapped up bare bones it actually looks like a nice desktop environment so right here Debian live i386 LXQT I'm gonna click that and we'll download that and there as you can see it's downloading I'll get back to you and that's done all right so we're of course going to get slackware 14.2 and you can just go to slackware.com we're gonna go down to get slack we're gonna go to mirrors and over here to Slackware ISO images and um, Slackware 64 is for 64 bit but since this is a 32 bit computer we're just gonna go with Slackware 14.2 and I know this is all overwhelming there's all this stuff but you want this right here, Slackware 14.2 install DVD.ISO. Should be about, yep, 
two and a half gigabytes approximately. So we're just gonna click download and that will download our Slackware image file. Okay, so here we are to download Puppy Linux based off Ubuntu 18.04 LTS Bionic Beaver. I'm just gonna go click to download the latest ISO and it will take us to SourceForge where we can then download the Puppy Linux ISO file. So we're just gonna click OK and then it will download it. And that is the last operating system that we really need to have. All right, so we are going to use this tool called Etcher. You could actually use Rufus if you wanted to, or any other tool like Unit Booting or whatever. But I just find Etcher really convenient because it's really easy to choose the file, and selecting a target makes it really easy. It makes it very obvious to select a USB drive and not format your hard drive, which of course you wouldn't want to do unlike most of the other tools so yeah so we're gonna plug in our USB flash drive and as you can see it shows up down here oh. whatever it has on this like this is for the JPT 3ds theme that I made um, you don't have to erase it it's gonna do that automatically so whatever it's gonna do whatever you have on this get it off if it's important if you don't just make sure you have a flash drive that you don't mind erasing. All right, so we're gonna choose a file. And I'm only gonna do this step one time in the video because there are, of course, um, I'm gonna have to do this step four times, but it's the same thing for every time, except every time you're just selecting a different ISO file. So I'm only gonna do it one time. And for this example, I'm gonna do Debian. Yeah, Debian LXQT.ISO. That's our file right there. So we're just gonna open that. And right here, when we go to select target, it makes it really easy. See right here when it says show hidden? This is our hard drive. It says large drive, system drive, source drive, all of that. It makes it really obvious not to select your hard drive so again I don't know if it will yeah so if we go back it should only show up your flash drive if you have to click hidden then it's definitely not under hidden it's trying to protect your hard drive so there we go we're just gonna do SanDisk cruiser glide oh and by the way see um, our flash drive right here is about 16 gigabytes make sure it's bigger than four gigabytes I'd recommend at least four gigabytes of a flash drive to do this pretty much every OS needs at least four gigabytes on the flash drive except for um, puppy Linux and maybe Lubuntu all right and right after we've entered our password it will just flash it and then when it's done you'll take it out and put it into your computer right, so here we have our that. computer and this is the flash drive that we formatted Debian on. So we can just go ahead and plug this into our computer. And when you turn on your computer, you're just gonna wanna spam your boot menu key. So for my, in my case, it's F12, but for some of you, it may be F9 or F11. And if there is no boot menu, you'll have to press your setup key, which is normally F2, and enable the boot menu from the BIOS settings. So anyway, we're just gonna power on. Oh yeah. Sorry, kinda forgot. Just let me plug it in real quick. This thing has not been charged in a long time, so it is completely dead. All right, so I'd highly recommend that your computer is plugged in during this process because we don't want your computer to die while it's installing an operating system or the operating system will be incomplete, fragmented, and just not work. So anyway, we're gonna turn on our computer and my boot key is F12, so I'm just going to spam that. So here is our boot menu on our netbook. We're just gonna go down to USB HDD and it tells us like the vendor right here, SanDisk. That's my USB stick, so we're just gonna click enter. And there we go. 
Uh, you can choose whatever you want. I'm just gonna do Debian, GNU, Linux, Live, Curtain, blah, 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 whatever, the first option. I'm just gonna press enter, and there we go. It will boot into a live CD where we can completely wipe the hard drive and then install Debian to it. All right, so here we are on our computer. It may take a little while to boot into the Debian Live CD, that is perfectly okay, does not matter. So, we're going to want to go to install Debian, it's probably right up here. We'll just click execute and it will open us with the Debian installer. Alright, now depending on the speed of your computer, it may take a little while if it seems sluggish, don't worry. It's generally faster once you install it to the hard drive. It's just it's having a lot of stress running off this USB. So I'm just gonna click next. Oh, by the way, before you start the installer, if you have any SD cards in your computer or whatever, you just wanna remove them. So I already did that. And it's gonna ask you to select your location. I'm going to skip this part in the video. Keyboard part. You know, for reasons you guys You can test understand. to make sure that the keyboard actually works. I've done this a million times. I know it works. And now it will bring up your hard drive. Make sure it's your hard drive. That's why you wanna take out all your SD cards and everything. You'll wanna to go to manual partitioning. And you're just gonna go right here, new partition table. And it will recommend master boot record. We don't want to use that. For multiple operating systems, it's actually much better to use GUID partition table, also known as GPT. So we're just gonna do okay. And there we go, as you can see, 150 gigabytes of free space on our hard drive. And right here, we're just gonna click that free space. We're gonna do create. And see, now it's gonna allocate all of this. We're gonna wanna shrink this down by quite a bit. So, I'm probably gonna go down to about 40. You can allocate this as you want. This is a 150 gigabyte hard drive and I'm trying to fit four operating systems on there. So, if I give each operating system 50 gigabytes, there won't be enough because that'll only be enough for three operating systems and I'm trying to fit four on here. So if I give every operating system 40, I'll have 120 gigabytes with about 30 left. So Puppy Linux does not need more than like 10 gigabytes. So that's a little bit a lot for Puppy Linux that will never be used. So it's kind of a waste of space. So I'm gonna do like maybe one, maybe two operating systems with 40 so that makes 80 and then one operating system with 50 which 80 plus 50 is 130 so we have 20 leftover gigs so we could probably do two operating systems with 50 one operating system with 40 puppy linux with about eight and then two gigabytes of swap so that's probably what i would do so yeah we'll just do 40 gigabytes and now, if you have a tiny screen like me, you'll see the bottom right here doesn't exist. So you'll just wanna full screen it. And there you go. We'll have that button down there, but don't click it yet. When it goes to mount point up here, we're just gonna wanna click the dash right there. All right, now we're gonna click okay. And root right there, that is where it will install Debian. So we're just gonna click next. And of course, right, we're going to enter. It does have this option, log in automatically without asking for the password. You can enable that if you want, although I'd highly recommend not to, just for better security. So we'll just click next. And this is what it looks like right now. If you click install, it will turn it into this. We'll just click install, and it will install it. And once it is done with that, we will get to installing Slackware. All right. So now as you can see, our computer is telling us that it's all done. So we'll just click done. And if right, I'm correct, it, it should brings you to the restart. login page. So don't worry, you won't have to remember your username every time. You'll just have to remember it this time, unless you have multiple users on your computer.
But anyway, you'll have to go back to the step where you entered your username. It's probably, mine is probably Carson G. And we'll just enter the password that we created. And it should let us in. All right, so the first thing we're going to want to do is connect to the internet. I can find, there we go. Oh, there we go. Internet, Conman UI setup. All right, so we're just gonna full screen that. And I'm going to connect to my wireless network. All right, so as you can see down here, I have Wi-Fi. So now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna open a terminal. As you can see, it opened it pretty quickly. It, it will spit that out. I almost forgot. You're gonna wanna type in sudo apt get update. And that way it will update the list of packages and repositories, cause how can it know what G part it is if we've never connected to the internet before and it doesn't come installed. So we will just let it update and I will get back to you when that's done. It should generally be pretty quick. And there we go. Now we are done with the terminal. We can go find Gparted. Here it is. And isn't that amazing? On an old, small, low-end laptop, we've just got it running up super speedy and we have actually installed a software on it in like less than two minutes. Man, I love Linux. All right, so as you can see, we have an unallocated 110 approximately gigabytes so we're just gonna click new I want to give slackware about 50 gigabytes because it takes up a lot of space it takes up like 10 gigabytes just um, right off the bat when you install it so we're gonna do ext4 so yeah just make sure it's ext4 primary partition that's about all we need actually no I don't want to do that we're gonna make a new partition, ext4. So it's already set how we want it. Make sure it's ext4, and I'm going to give it about 50 gigs. And add. And then we'll have about 60 more gigabytes of unallocated space, which is perfect. So there's our slack or partition we're just going to click apply all right and it really shouldn't take that long just to create an extra partition see it's already done so then it's going to reload which shouldn't take too long either it's already done and right here this is our thing dev sda2 ext4 48.96 gigabytes you're going to write that down because we're going to want we're going to want that when we're in the slackware installer Okay, so using your other computer that you have formatting USB drives, uh, you want to format your Slackware USB drive, and after you've done that, insert it into your computer, and we're just going to power on and hit our boot key, which is F12. I'll enter my hard drive password. Okay, and of course we'll go down to our USB device. And now it will bring us here. This may look overwhelming, don't worry. Just press enter. And then it will do it all for you. It will boot into Linux. And then once we get there, of course it will bring up a command line, but don't worry. It is, oh, or we can just click enter. So here, we're, it is not a command line installer but the partition manager is command line. That's why we did it in Gparted. Anyway, so we can log in as root and see right here, CF disk or F disk. Those were the partition managers that it comes with, but they're command line and I found it much easier to use Gparted, which is graphical. So anyway, we'll just type in setup and it will bring up this kind of installer. And it may look overwhelming, but again, just do what I do, okay? So we're gonna go down to target, set up your target partitions, and right here, dev sda one Linux 41 gigabytes. 
So, of course, th this the partition that you select here may be similar to mine, it may not be, so that's why I encouraged you to write it down. So, the partition you wrote down to install Slackware on, we're gonna do that. Dev SDA2 Linux, which is ext4, 49 gigabytes, which is close enough to 48.96. It won't be exact on the gigabytes, but it's approximate. So that's the right one, Dev SDA2. So we will just click that, and we'll just do format. Even though it's already formatted as ext4, we'll just let Slackware format it to its liking. It shouldn't take too long, it should only take like a couple seconds. All right, so now right here where it says in use, so it says in use right there, we're just gonna click continue. And that's the only partition it should have on there. Whatever you added in your whatever the partition that you're gonna install it on that's the only partition you should have there so that's our partition so um sure you just click yes here so we'll just continue because I don't have any NTFS partitions so never mind I just want to click no on that part actually so if you're using a Slackware CD or DVD because your old computer doesn't support booting from a USB drive, you can do that. But since we're using a USB stick, we're going to click install Slackware from a USB stick. Click OK. And it should say a Slackware package directory was found on dev, SDB, blah, blah, blah. So all this, you'll just want to click enter. And right here where it says full install everything, nine gigabytes, a little bit like nine plus gigabytes of software recommended. We're going to do that. The reason I gave Slackware 50 gigabytes is because it already has like 10, like right, like you see right there, about 10 gigabytes to begin with already taken up. So yeah, there's a lot of that. So that's why I gave Slackware a little bit extra because a normal Linux distribution only takes up about six gigabytes on refresh installation, so this takes up a little bit more. Anyway, we're just gonna click full, just enter, and it will install a ton of packages, and it should only take a few minutes, and I'll get back to you when it's done. All right, so this part you can just click skip. Um, we're just gonna do do not install Lilo Just click enter here enter here click no Just click enter here No You can choose whatever you want here. I set my hardware clock to local time and I will select my area Okay, and now it'll just click enter Yes, and we will set our root password. All right. All right, so now we have Lubuntu 18.04 alternate formatted on this flash drive. So we're just gonna go ahead and plug it into our computer. And of course we press our power button and our boot key. All right. And now we'd go to SanDisk. And it will give us a language. We're just gonna select English. And we'll do install Lubuntu. So the reason, well, Lubuntu, yes, Lubuntu is already an extremely lightweight distribution. I'm going with Lubuntu alternate to make it even lighter. All right, English again, select your region. That part's blurred out for me. All right, you can try to have your keyboard layout detected by pressing a series of keys. If you do not want to do this, you will be able to select a keyboard layout from a list. Eh, I'll click no. 
and we'll just select it from a list. And we'll detect our hardware. <coughs> and right now it's not installing, it's just loading the additional components that of course it needs to install. Back to you and that's done. All right, your system has multiple network interfaces. Choose one to use as the primary network interface during the installation. If possible, the first connected network interface found has been selected. So you could use ethernet, but I am going to use wireless. All right, so now I'll ask you to choose the host name for your system. I'm gonna do Carson Acer, uh, I'll do just do Aspire 1 ZG5 AOA 150. And it's kind of a long host name, Lubuntu. 18.04 LTS. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's kind of a long host name, but whatever, I like it. Continue. Full name for the new user, we'll enter our name, Carson G. And the username will, yeah, sure, Carson. And we will enter a password for our user and we will have to re-enter our password for an user to verify it and now it's setting up the clock setting up the partitioner. The installer has detected that the following disks have mounted partitions, dev SDA. Do you want the installer to try to unmount the partitions on the disk? Continuing, if you leave them out and you will not be able to create delete resize, yeah. So we'll do no. We don't want to unmount partitions used because we don't want to um, modify them. We just want to create a partition. So it should open the partitioner. I'm not gonna do this, we're not gonna do this. We are going to do guided. Use the largest continuous free space. We're gonna do that. And we will resize it to make room for Puppy Linux and a swap partition. So. So as you can see, it's gonna create its bioscrub partition, whatever that it needs, and a 64 gigabyte EXT4. We'll resize that EXT4 later, but yeah. We'll just do finish partitioning and write changes to disk. Write the changes to the disks. We're gonna wanna go yes, and it will write the changes to the disk. And it will install the system. I'll get back to you when it's done with that. So if you need to do this step, you can do it. I am just gonna leave it blank. Continue. And we'll configure apt. All right. Install the Grub bootloader on hard on hard disk. The following other operating systems have been detected on this computer. Debian, GNU Linux, 10 Buster, Slackware 14.2. All right, that's good. So we're just gonna click yes. Select device for bootloader installation. We'll do dev SDA. It should be like ATA, WDC, blah, blah, blah. It shouldn't be your flash drive. So just select the one that's not your flash drive and it will do that. All right, 
here we are. Here, when it's asking us like about UTC or local time right here, we're just going to want to click no. All right. And then it will finish up the installation and that will say installation is complete. So we'll just do continue and um, it will reboot. So you can test that out and make sure that it worked, but you don't really have to because it did. And then you can just, from there we'll move on to installing Puppy Linux. And now we have Puppy Linux on this USB drive right here. We'll go ahead and power that on and then we'll spam our boot key. Go to our USB device. There we go. All right, here we go. We are in Puppy Linux. Let's close that. Uh, all right, now we'll go down to applications. We'll go to system. G parted partition manager, SDA internal drive. Okay. Here we are. Now this is Lubuntu. As you can see, it took up all the remaining free space. So we're just gonna shrink it. We'll go down to about, there we go. So that one has 40, that one has 50, that one has 50. And then we have 10 gigabytes of leftover space. So we're gonna do that and we'll just have it shrink and it will take a while. Okay, now it is done. So we'll just close. All right. So don't close out that window. We still want it. We're gonna click this unallocated space here and we'll just go to new. And we'll go ext2. And we will shrink it down to about eight gigabytes. And then this unallocated two gigabytes right here, we are going to make that a swap partition. And we will click apply. And now this shouldn't take too long either. I mean, this shouldn't take as long as the shrinking did. This should be done pretty quickly. As you can see, it's already done. So keep G parted open. And we'll go here. Set up puppy installer. The universal installer. Internal hard drive. Yes. And let it do that. All right, so now it brings up this page right here. And over here, this ext2 partition we created, that is dev sda5. sda5, sda5. So we'll do install puppy to sda5. And just to double check, blah, 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 which has an ext2 file system, ext2, and 800, 8,640 megabytes, which is equal to eight gigabytes. That's approximate. The important thing is, this is the only ext2 partition. So that's how we know it's the right one. We are going to do frugal, do frugal right here. Okay. Just keep, click okay on that. And then right now what it's doing, 
pretty much is installing. It really doesn't take that long. It's not like it's not like Ubuntu or Linux Mint where it takes like 20 minutes. This takes like two seconds. When it asks you, would you like to install Grub for DOS? No, we would not. So click no. We are going to add this to the already existing Grub that we have installed. Just click OK. And as you can see, it's all done. There we go. So here as you can see, we have about 158 megabytes taken up just by default. If we refresh, it should be a little bit more than that. Let's see this one right here. Now it has about 425 megabytes taken up. That means that Puppy Linux is successfully installed. So we can just close that out and we can do shut down. No. And there we go. All right guys, that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. Well, that's it for this video. I didn't want to make this video too long. Obviously, there are still more steps to do. One, you need to add Puppy Linux to the Grub menu. And this next one is kind of optional. Two, you could configure the Grub menu and organize it and set a background and everything. It's really easy using a tool called Grub Customizer. And number three up here is configuring Slackware and getting that ready. So there are things to do. There are still more things to do, but I have other videos on that and I just didn't want to make this video too long. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you next time.